Welcome to another Inner Princess Guide to Walkabout Mini Golf. In this video, I'm going to be offering 15 tips to help improve your playing, technique, and consistency, and in turn, this should show in your scores. Remember, as with any sport, you'll likely have to get worse before getting better, so give everything time to work its way into your game. If you find this helpful, please leave a comment below, like the video, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe for future content. Anyway, let's get started with tip number one. My first tip is to find the right lock ball position setting for your way of playing. While in VR, you'll be more focused when you're not distracted by your guardian and real world surroundings. You have two choices of how to position the ball in walkabout, and this is governed by the lock ball position switch. With this lock off, the ball will be positioned in front of you wherever you're currently standing, meaning that if you move in the real world, then press the trigger button, you'll be aligned ready to hit your ball from there. The downside to this is that it positions slightly ahead of you, so you may end up chasing a ball across your guardian and may hit a wall or step on an unsuspecting cat. If you turn this lock on, you'll always be playing the ball from the same place in your guardian. I prefer this as it means you can find a location with plenty of room to manoeuvre and you'll always be playing from there. Tip number two is that walkabout mini golf is played with one controller and ideally two hands. Ditch the controller for your non-dominant hand, get a good grip on the remaining controller and use your second hand for stability. There are lots of different putting grips in real golf, so I won't govern where to put your second hand, but I personally grip the controller with my right hand and wrap my left hand around the little finger, wrist and thumb joint of that right hand. Tip three is to set your putter strength correctly. There's no right or wrong setting here, so I'll talk you through how I calibrate mine. First, find a hole with a reasonable distance to putt. Assume your normal putting stance and imagine for a moment that instead of hitting the ball, you're rolling it instead. Complete the motion of rolling the ball a couple of times, then step up and putt your ball. If there's a big difference between the distance you hit and what you were expecting, adjust and repeat until you find a strength which feels most comfortable. I find mine to be between 60 and 70%, so I settle on 65% most of the time. Set yours too high and you may lose touch. Too low and you'll introduce unnecessary muscle movement when trying to hit harder. Tip four is to now set your putting angle. Again, there's no strict right or wrong here, though I have seen some concerning angles used by other players. My way of calibrating this as a right-hander is as follows, and for the left-handers just follow the same steps with the opposite hands. Take the control in your right hand and swing it around, maybe even use a figure of eight movement just to interrupt your sense of where the club is. While doing this, close your eyes and bring your left hand out, palm upwards, as if you're about to rest the club on it. With your eyes still closed, rest the imaginary end of your club on your left hand, then open them to see how well the angle is aligned. Use the gap between your nose and the headset to see how it overlays with your left hand in the real world. If the club is further towards your fingertips than you'd expected, you need to increase your angle. And if it's too far towards your wrist, you need to decrease the angle. I find my ideal setting to be between 15 to 25 degrees, so try that region for starters. Tip five is about your practice swing. Before taking your shot, it's a good idea to have at least one practice swing to get the feel for the power you're about to use. And there are two ways you can do this. One is simply to step back away from the ball and swing to avoid it. I'd recommend practicing with the full follow through and not just to stop your club abruptly. The second method is to use the grip to putt feature. With this turned on, your club will only make physical contact with the ball when you're holding the grip button. So without moving away from the ball, you can swing straight through it to practice. When you're ready, hold the grip button to make your club head appear and repeat the motion to hit the shot. Tip number six is to get your stance right. As this is not exclusively a VR pointer and is applicable to golf in general, I'd recommend watching golf coaches on YouTube talk you through this, uh, but you may struggle to find two who agree with each other. My summary advice is, stand at 90 degree angles to where you want to hit the ball, Position your club behind the ball and use the contact point as your centre line. Spread your feet shoulder width apart while keeping this line as the centre point. Relax your knees and lean forward slightly so that your knees line up with approximately the centre of your foot. Your weight feels balanced and your eyes are above your club head looking downwards. 
practice standing up, moving about, and then coming back to the stance until it becomes second nature. Tip seven is to remember that the club length auto adjusts. In order to accommodate players of different heights and stances, the club length in walkabout mini golf auto adjusts. And once you've hit your shot, it will lock to that length until the ball comes to rest. This means that if you stand up straight, it will look as though you're using a long putter. And if you crouch down, your putter will look tiny. Before you take your next shot, stand up, raise your club in front of you, then reset your stance. Otherwise, you may find yourself leaning further and further forward to accommodate an ever decreasing club length until you eventually just topple over. Tip number eight is to get your swing right. Again, I'm not going into full-on golf coach mode as I'm heavily underqualified for that, but there are some do's and don'ts I can go through here. You want your swing to be simple, smooth and consistent. So once you have your stance set and you're gripping correctly, swing straight back and forth through the ball with a pendulum motion. If you get this right, you should keep a fairly fixed shape across your shoulders, elbows and hands. There are again plenty of golf coaches on YouTube who can demonstrate this, so I'll mention a couple of things to avoid. Don't flick your wrist. This is an unsupported and inconsistent motion, which adds variability to your line and length. If you find yourself doing this, it's a good idea to work on your swing. Don't try to push the ball. I've seen players do this and it doesn't work well. In VR, you can't push as such, as only the first contact with the ball will take effect. Instead, swing smoothly back and smoothly forward. Tip nine follows on from the last, and that is to avoid tensing on impact. You should be relaxed when taking your shot, but your natural and even unconscious inclination might be to tense up and grip harder just as you hit the ball. As the controllers are light, this can cause small movements just before impact, which will affect your line and weight. Instead, focus on smooth from the start of your shot until the finish. Tip number 10 is more of a statement. You cannot put spin on the ball with your club. The only spin generated in this game is from movement across surfaces, such as topspin when the ball is rolling forward. It is not possible to put extra topspin, backspin or sidespin on the ball by changing the way you hit it, no matter what someone else has told you. Tip 11 is a reminder to line up your shot. Some putts have the benefit of keeping the hole within your peripheral vision, in which case you may find you're able to just naturally align yourself. Longer putts may push the hole beyond your vision, so you'll need to align yourself first. To do this, step back behind the ball, visualize the line you're planning to hit, and you may find it useful to use your club at this point, then re-approach your ball at 90 degrees to this line. The next tip is to keep your head still during the putting motion. This is something that most of us can be guilty of doing by accident because there's a temptation to watch your ball as soon as you've hit it. In the worst case, this can lead to an anticipatory head movement before you've even made contact with the ball. Practice mode and especially repeated trick shot practice can make this worse, I know that from experience. So if you ever need to fix this habit, try the following. First, line your shot up, set your stance and grip, and then play your shot without moving your head at all. Stay focused on the spot where your ball starts from, even after you've hit it. Hopefully you'll know where it's gone when you hear it drop in the hole, but doing this action a few times should help correct any head movement. The next tip is to use the dots on the mats. There are texture marks and intentional dots placed around the greens in Walkabout, and these can and should be used to help line up your putt. Once you've found the right mark to set your line by, hopefully close enough to your ball to be in your peripheral vision, Aim for that point, but use enough power to go the full distance. When combined with the previous tips, you should be able to line your shot up, keep your head still, and hit your ball straight over your marker. And by doing that, you'll already know it's going where you want it to. Tip number 14 drifts slightly into the psychology of sport, and that is to create and follow a routine when you putt. If you just simply walk up to the ball and hit, it's quick, but it can build bad habits. My advice would be to create a routine which you'll follow for every shot. This will help set your focus, line up your shot, take your practice swing and get your stance right. This is particularly useful when you reach a high pressure shot, as focusing on the routine rather than the significance of your upcoming putt will help you relax and perform at your best. 
My final tip for this video is to account for the impact of spin on angled bounces. For those of you who have seen my Cherry Blossom Easy course guides, you'll know that I've gone into detail about this before, but for those of you who haven't, here's what I mean. When the ball rolls forwards, that rolling means the ball is rotating or spinning. When it hits an object, the ball changes direction and the rotation will need to as well. For a brief moment though, the ball will skid as the direction of movement and rotation don't match. Think of a car's tires when drifting, if that helps to visualize it. At a certain point in this skid, the spin and direction will need to align, and so the ball will kick slightly in the direction the spin was going. This causes the angle to widen out slightly. If you don't account for this, you'll miss shots you're expecting to hit. The length of this skidding period is relative to the speed of the ball. The harder you hit it, the further the ball will travel before the spin bites. Just factor this into your shots by aiming further to the left if your ball is bouncing to the right, and further to the right if your ball is bouncing to the left. So that concludes my 15 tips to improve your putting in walkabout mini golf. I hope you've gained at least something from watching this, and if this is all new to you, then just take it one step at a time. If you make changes to your swing, stance, settings, or routine, you may well get a little worse at first, but in time, you will overcome this and your consistency will have greatly improved as a result of that work you've put in. Please like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to help support the channel, and leave a comment if you have anything to add. Thanks again for watching, and I'll hopefully see you on the course soon.